So in this video, I want to take a look at a couple of examples of graphing polynomial functions. And I know a calculator would do all of these steps for you. You would just have to graph that function in your calculator and you could answer all these questions. But it is to your benefit to be able to do this algebraically and be able to walk through these steps to solve some problems. It can save you some time the more you can recognize and, and do some of this by hand and it's a good check for you when you go to do this on your calculator and just kind of check to see what you did graphically. So first thing is we have that polynomial there f of x equal to x to the third minus 2x squared minus x plus 2. So first thing is that in behavior. So we can get that in behavior by looking at this leading term here. And using what your book calls leading coefficient test, which I'm so used to calling it leading, leading term test. If I use that phrase, I apologize. So the leading coefficient test will tell me what the end behavior of that polynomial should look like. So I have a odd exponent, the third power. So my exponent is a 3. My coefficient in front of x to the third is a positive 1. So I have a positive coefficient and a power that is odd. So using that leading term test, leading coefficient test, that tells me immediately that it goes down as I move to the left and it goes up as I move to the right. So that's one piece of information I can hold on to and we'll need eventually to draw this graph. Second thing is the fact that this is a degree 3 polynomial immediately tells me that I'm going to get three zeros. I should get three zeros if I count multiplicities and then always one less than that will tell you the number of turning points it could have at most. So could have at most two turning points. So my zeros match the degree my turning points is always one less. And we'll use that more as a check for a couple of things when we go to graph this by hand. So now I need the y-intercept. This is a polynomial, so it's going to cross the y-axis at one point. And it's just a, it's a value that you can find easily, and it's just to help you draw a little bit more accurate sketch. So the way you find any y-intercept, does not matter what function you're looking at, is you plug in 0 for x. So I'm going to take f of 0. Now, I know you could mentally do this because when I'm just plugging in 0 for x, all of those places become 0. And so I end up with 0 minus 0 minus 0 plus 2. So I just end up with a 2. So that my y-intercept is at 0 comma 2. That's a point on my graph. It's an easy, quick point to find. And again, will help us draw a little bit more accurate sketch. So now on to some of the work that we're going to have to do, which is going to take several steps, is finding the zeros and their multiplicities. So first of all, we know that some polynomials in this case, this is a third degree polynomial, but there are some techniques that you've seen in previous videos that allow you to factor a polynomial. And one of those techniques is that if I have something that has four terms in it, then I can possibly factor that by doing grouping. And in this case, I can. So I'm going to take these first two terms there. So x to the third minus 2x squared. And I'm going to look at those two terms and see what can I factor out, which is x squared. So this is going to become x squared times x minus 2. And then if I look at these second two terms, well, at first glance, there's really not anything I can take out of a negative 1x and a positive 2. However, if I'm wanting to do this by grouping, I know I should end up with an x minus 2. And what's going to allow me to end up with an x minus 2 is to factor out a negative 1. We can always factor out positive 1 or negative 1 of any expression. So in this case, if I take out the negative 1, that will turn it around for me and turn that into x minus 2 to make it match my other, my first part of this problem that I was doing by grouping. So now I write down the factor inside the parentheses that those two have in common. And so what they have in common is x minus 2. And then what's sitting on the outside there is my x squared minus 1. So that's how I factor that. I, I take out the one that they have in common, which is the x minus 2, and then I write down what's sitting on the outside of those parentheses. I put those together as x squared minus 1. And don't forget, we're still setting this equal to 0 because we're solving for x. 
So I can take this one more step and I can say that this is x minus 2 times and then x squared minus 1 I can factor. That is x minus 1 times x plus 1, the difference of squares. So I know I should get three zeros and so I should have three linear factors and so I've got my three linear factors. So that tells me that my zeros are at x equal to positive 2 x minus 1 equal to 0 tells me x is equal to positive 1. x plus 1 equal to 0 tells me x equals negative 1. We've talked about zeros and factors in, in, in previous videos and such. So those are my three zeros. They all have a multiplicity of 1. Okay. So every single one of those zeros have a multiplicity of, sorry, I'm running out of room, have a multiplicity of 1. Because I see each one of those factors one time. I see x minus 2 once, x minus 1 one time, x plus 1 one time. Okay, so now I have all of that information that I, that I could find by hand. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all of that information to draw a sketch of this graph. So on this next page over here, I've got my three zeros. I have my, so from the previous page here, I got my three zeros at two, at positive one, at negative one. So I'm going to put three points on my graph. So I have a point here at two, a point here at positive one, a point here at negative one. So I have those three zeros. And then the other things that I have are I have my y intercept and I have my in behavior and I have my multiplicities. So I have all three of those things that I am going to use to help me finish drawing this sketch of this graph. So first thing is I'm gonna put my y-intercept on my graph here. So I'm gonna put my y-intercept up here at 0, 2. All right, so now I know my end behavior. My end behavior is that if I go to the left, it goes down. If I go to the right, it goes up. So if I'm going to draw this to match that over there, then I know that my graph starts and comes up to negative 1 because as I go left, my graph goes down. But now we're going to graph this. We're going to graph this left to right. So it, if I, as I graph it, it comes up to negative 1. When I get to negative 1, I consider the multiplicity at negative 1. The multiplicity at negative 1 was 1, so my graph passes through that point there on my graph and goes up to my y-intercept there. Now, I don't know where my max or min is. It could be there at, at 0, 2. It could be somewhere else. So I don't know exactly where my maximum occurs. But I do know that someone here, it turns and comes back down to my 0 there at 1. And then what happens there is that that also has an odd multiplicity. So my graph passes through there. So now, again, I don't know where that minimum occurs, but I do know that my graph has to turn and come back up and go through my zero there at positive 2, and then my graph continues on. Because I knew it should have two turning points at most, and so that one does have two turning points. And I knew because of my multiplicities that my graph passed through each one of those points. Passed through at negative 1, passed through at positive 1, passed through at 2, and then I know what my end behavior tells me what it should look like. And mine does go down as I go to the left and go up as I go to the right. So that is a sketch of my graph there. Now, if you translate this over to what you're going to see on my math lab, I want to talk about that for just a minute because it can be confusing when you get to my math lab. So I uh, have got the same exact problem pulled up. So x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2. So it's going to ask you for in behavior, which we've already answered. It's going to ask me for the zeros or the x-intercept and then whether they go through cross or touch and so we've answered that question as well we've answered the y-intercept so we've answered all the different pieces to the puzzle that it wants us to answer and we did that by hand so whereas you know you would do that on a piece of paper and then you would come back over here and then you would you would answer the question there so in, in my case the graph falls to the left and rises to the right so as I go left it goes down as I go right it goes up so I would choose option B there and then I have my zeros and I can tell whether it crosses 
or touches and turns. And in this case, all three of my zeros crossed the x-axis. And then I was able to find my y-intercept. So you can answer those questions. I would work it out on paper, just like we just did on that slide there. I would work it out. Make sure you can go through the steps algebraically. My math lab is much easier if you will take those problems where you have to do work and you will take the time to write it out on paper, work it out, and then go back and just click and type in your answers. You will save yourself so many headaches if you do that. So the last thing I need to do here is I need to graph this. And so this is what I wanted to talk to you about. So I'm wanting to graph this polynomial function. So we have our palette for a line for absolute value for a quadratic. So if you're looking at something that's x squared and then just a polynomial in general. So this says a four point cubic tool. So and that's what we have is a cubic function. So when you click on this, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to plot at least four points. So that's why we found the zeros. That's three of our points. And that's why we found that y-intercept. That's our first fourth point. So we're going to plot all four of those points. So I had a zero at negative one. I had a zero at positive one. I had a zero at two. And then I had my y-intercept at zero, two. So it knows how to draw the shape from there of it passing through at negative one, going to my y-intercept there at positive two, passing through at positive one, passing through at positive two. So that's why I make you go find those zeros by hand and go find that y-intercept because when you click on this tool here, you're going to need at least four points. And so from there, I can click Save, and then it's got my graph. Now, again, this does not look exactly like my sketch. We drew a sketch. This is giving me the exact picture once I knew my zeros and once I knew where my y-intercept is. Okay, But that's how that tool works on my math lab. So you want to plot your zeros and you want to plot your y-intercept. You'll need four points when you go to plot. So if you don't have four points then you do have your function sitting here. So don't forget that if, if you don't have four points after you find the zeros and find the y-intercept, because you may have a zero that has a multiplicity of two, and if, you, if that happens to you, you're going to take away one of your, one of your points that, that you need. And so from there, just pick another point. So I could have picked negative two, plugged it in over here. I could have picked... I could have picked um, three plugged in three over here anything i had not used already i could have used to plug in to get another point on my graph to help me to draw the shape of that graph all right so let's look at um another example here and not not on my math lab but let's just look at another example on the the slides here and talk about something else so Let's take a look at this function here. It says that we want to graph f of x equal to negative 1 half times x plus 3 times x minus 1 squared times x plus 2. So this polynomial has already been factored for me. So I can tell you my zeros without doing any work other than the fact that x plus 3 tells me negative 3. x minus 1 tells me x equal to positive 1 x plus 2 tells me x equals negative 2. So I've got my zeros. My zeros are at x equal to negative 3, x equal to positive 1, x equal to negative 2. And then I can look and see what the multiplicities are. x plus 3, I see that one time, so that has a multiplicity of 1. x minus 1, it's squared which is x minus 1 times x minus 1, so I see it twice, so it has a multiplicity of 2. And then x equal to negative 2, I see x plus 2 once, so that has a multiplicity of 1. All right, so now this is different than the previous example. Previous example, I had to factor. This one was already factored for me. So it's a matter of which way it's given to you. And some things are going to be easier to find than others. So if it's factored, it's easy to find the zeros, and I can look and find the multiplicities. So let me rewrite that down here with it kind of all not written in the shorthand with, with the uh, exponents. So if I wrote this down here, this would be negative 1 half times, and it would be x plus 3. And then x minus 1 squared would be x minus 1 times x minus 1, and then times x plus 2. 
So what I don't have is I don't have that multiplied out. And so since I don't have that multiplied out, I cannot find my in behavior just quickly and easily. I've got to do a little bit of work. But if I look down here, if I were going to multiply this polynomial out, I have an x, an x, an x, and an x. If I multiplied those together, that would be x times x times x times x, which would give me x to the fourth. And then I have this coefficient sitting out here of negative one half. And so that's all I need. If I'm going to do in behavior, I just need my leading term. So there is my leading term. If I just think about how I would multiply that back out. So I have four x's. That would be x to the fourth. I got that coefficient that they pulled out there, the negative one half. So there's my leading term. So now the leading coefficient test tells us that if we have a negative coefficient and the exponent is positive, I'm sorry, and the exponent is even, so if my exponent is even and my coefficient is negative, those two things together tell me that it falls as I go to the left and it falls as I go to the right. Negative one half x to the fourth works just like if you had a negative coefficient and it were x squared. It would be down and down because that coefficient is negative and that exponent is even. And so my end behavior would be down and down in both directions. All right, my zeros where I've already found them. Well, since it's x to the fourth, I know I should have four at most, which if I count my multiplicities down here, I do have four. I have one negative three, two positive ones because my multiplicity is two, and then one negative two because my multiplicity is one. So I have four zeros, and that would tells me that I'm going to have at most, that doesn't tell me I'm going to have that many, but at most, three turning points. So the last thing that I need here is I need my y-intercept. And so to get my y-intercept, I'm going to have to plug in 0 for x. So let's be careful about that here because this has not been multiplied out for me. So I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here. So f of 0 is going to be negative 1 half times, I'm going to have 0 plus 3 times 0 minus 1 squared times 0 plus 2. Okay. So that's going to be negative 1 half times 0 plus 3 gives me 3. So let's think about 0 minus 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. If I took negative 1 and I squared it, that would turn into positive 1. And 0 plus 2 would give me 2. So 3 times 1 is 3, times 2 is 6, and 6 times negative 1 half gives me negative 3. So my y-intercept is at 0, comma, negative 3. Okay. That's one approach you could have taken. The other approach you could have taken is if you plugged in 0 where we had it factored down here, if we plugged in 0 here, this would turn into 3. We plugged in 0 here, this would turn into negative 1. We plugged in 0 there, that would turn into negative 1. We plugged in 0 there, that would turn into 2. And then multiply 3 times negative 1 times negative 1 times positive 2. That would give you 6 times the negative 1 half. That would give you negative 3 as well. So either way you wanted to approach that, you could. All right, so now I have my y-intercept. So I'm going to circle these in red here. So I have my y-intercept, which I need. And then I have my zeros and their multiplicities, which I need as well. So when I go to graph this... I'm going to graph my three zeros. So I have a zero at negative three. I have a zero at negative two. I have a zero at positive one. So those are my three zeros from the previous page here. Sorry, I went the wrong way. So negative three, negative two, positive one. I have my y-intercept, which is at zero, negative three. So my y-intercept is down here at zero, negative three. And then my end behavior tells me it should go down and down in both directions. So when I draw this, I know that because when we draw this left to right, that my graph increases up to that zero there at negative three. So what happens when I get to negative three? It's got a multiplicity of one, so it passes through at negative three. So then my graph comes back down at negative 2, I'm picking up my pen so it's getting off a little bit. So when it comes back down to negative 2, 
Uh, that also has a multiplicity of 1. So my graph passes through here at negative 2. Now, the thing I don't know is where that max is and where that minimum is. So I, that I can't answer without doing some calculus, which we're not going to do any calculus. So this is just a sketch of what this graph looks like. So then somewhere down in here, it turns and comes back up and goes through my y-intercept. That's why the y-intercept is important. And then when it gets to that point there at 1, what happens at 1? Well, what happens at 1 is that that had a multiplicity of 2. So since that has a multiplicity of 2, my graph bounces or turns off of that 0. So went through at negative 3, went through at negative 2, because those both have a multiplicity of 1, and then it's got to go through my y-intercept. And then when it got to 1, it bounced off of 1 and went back down. So if you were going to be sketching this um, in my math lab using that graphing feature you might have to find some extra points on your graph and that's where again you would use your zeros you would use the negative three the negative two the zero negative three for your y-intercept and then the one zero you use those four points it would ask you for a fifth point since this is a fourth degree polynomial so that's where you would need to go use something you haven't used already. So what's a number we haven't used yet? We haven't used negative 1. So we could go plug negative 1 in for x and see what we get. So if you need to find another point when you're graphing using my math lab, go and find one that you can find a value for. So use an integer value. So use something you haven't used already. So I haven't used negative 1. I haven't used positive 2. Those would be the, the two that I would pick in, uh, in that situation. But again, I wanted to give you two different kind of uh, types of problems you're going to see. One where it's already factored for you and then the other where we had to do some factoring. So you will see it both ways. So pay close attention to that. And hopefully those two will help you go through the steps. But again, the more you can do algebraically and the more you work out on paper, the easier it's going to be to do your homework in my math lab. So take the time to work it out on paper.